In today's oil painting tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to paint this beautiful garden landscape. Hey what's up, my name is Tiffany Teal and welcome to another painting tutorial. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to paint realistic landscapes, improve your painting, or any other art related stuff, start now by clicking that subscribe button and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. For today's painting, I'm going to be working with some of these M. Graham oil paints as well as this walnut alkyd medium. And because I am a non-toxic oil painting studio, I had to find an alternative to the oh-so-popular liquid, which helps speed up the drying process of your oil paints. And that is the same thing that this does. This is just non-toxic. And I could not live without this stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna be working on a Frederick's 8x10 cotton stretched canvas which I have applied a layer of gesso to and then sanded smooth to the surface that I like. And everything that I am going to be using today I'll put a link to them in the description below so make sure to check that out. Now grab your paintbrush and let's go paint. I'm using Liquitex acrylics to do a quick sketch of the sky with a few different layers to get a smooth blend. I mix ultramarine blue with a lot of titanium white to get a very light blue for the sky. And for these clouds, I used azo yellow and a little tiny bit of pyrrol red. To get the color for these trees, I used ultramarine blue with some raw umber and then lightened it up quite a bit with titanium white. And if you do the right mix, if you get 50-50 with ultramarine blue and raw umber, you get this beautiful neutral color, this beautiful gray. And the way you can tell if you have enough of one or another is when you add titanium white to them it becomes this beautiful light gray so for these trees i added in a little bit more raw umber because i did want them a little bit more on the warmer side i like to start my paintings with a little sketch and I like to do this one of two ways. I will either sketch my idea right onto the canvas with a wash down paint, or I will sketch it in my sketchbook and I will transfer the image to the canvas using a charcoal pencil, which is what I did in this case. I had an image that I liked in my sketchbook and I outline the main lines with a charcoal pencil. And then I flip that over onto my canvas and used my fingernail or another hard object. And I firmly press, but gently, <laughs> onto the paper, transferring the lines from the paper onto the canvas. I ended up having to do it this way this time because I ran out of transfer paper. <laughs> so if you don't have 
any transfer paper, this is a wonderful alternative to get your images onto your canvas. If you need a little bit more explanation on exactly how I did this, leave it in the comments below and I'll try to explain this process in a little bit more detail for you. And I have been getting a few different requests to slow down my videos just a little bit so you can see my process, my technique, and more of how I mix my colors. So that is why this one is a little longer than my normal videos. And if you like the video like this, Please let me know in the comments below and I'll even see if I can maybe split up my videos and even do some more of the real time. I know I do real time in a lot of my videos and I just do a section when I want to go more in depth on how to achieve a certain look. But if you would like to see them split up into different segments. Let me know in the comments below and I will see about trying to do that more often. For these flowers, I am mixing ultramarine blue with just a very small amount of quinacrono magenta just to get it to be a little bit more on the purple-ish side and it brightens up that blue just a tiny bit and to get the lighter areas of the flower I've just added just a tiny bit of titanium white. I'm also using a round number two to fill in these petals.
With these distant trees, I wanted them to have that blurry effect. And the way to achieve this is to lay down the trunk and the main limbs only. Then I take a dry, soft, but stiff brush. And right now I'm using a filbert number two and I'm blending the edges carefully. And by doing this, you'll pick up enough paint on the brush to make the smaller branches and twigs for the rest of the tree. And the bonus about doing it this way is the paint thins out when you're dry brushing the twigs and it gets a lot lighter and it makes the twigs exactly the color that you need because the thinner they go up into the trees, the lighter they become. So this just happens by default. And I'll leave a link to these filbert brushes in the description below.
And when you're mixing oil paints, you do not need to use a lot. I, if you can look at my palette, I mix very little amounts at a time. And the reason I mix very little is for one, I really enjoy learning how to master a color. So I do not, I, I personally don't like mixing a ton of one color and then having to change that color a little bit at a time when I add it to the canvas. I like to mix a color and then when I run out of it, remix that same color because you're never going to get it exact, but it's going to be in the same it's going to be in the same ballpark as what you've had before. And that to me just adds that little something extra to your colors and I feel it doesn't make your painting look very flat. If you end up over mixing your colors then there's depth or transition in your colors. If you look at my palette right here where I'm mixing all of these different greens for the grass, you'll see a gradient. And I do that because there, all those colors are still harmonious but I can go in and it's easier for me to transition from a light to a dark color. Whatever color I need to pick up, there are hundreds of different shades just in that little tiny range. And it goes all the way from brown to dark green to all the way to my light green. And I can pick up any color on that spectrum that I want at any given moment and they're not mixed up so well that they're over mixed and if you want to learn more about over mixing leave a comment down below and I will explain what over mixing is and how it can negatively affect your painting Now, I happen to know a lot of artists that steer away from spring or summer paintings because of all the green. Green can be very tricky to understand whether you are just starting out or you're a seasoned artist. But the one thing that you really want to remember is the saturation of the colors and what I mean by that if you don't understand what saturation is the further back you go the less of that color that you want in it so we're talking about green here and the further back you go the less green you want in there so in order to do that add in either a white a gray or brown and in this case we added raw umber into my ultramarine blue and my azo yellow mix and that 
will dull down the color and it'll push it back. And dulling down the color is the same as desaturating it. And when you desaturate a color, you show atmospheric perspective. It pushes them back into the canvas. So in order to do all this grass area, I started mixing ultramarine blue and azo yellow to get the green that I liked. And then I slowly mixed in raw umber just until the green wasn't so bright. The more yellow you add into the green, the closer it'll bring that object to the viewer. The more brown or the more desaturated you make the color, the further you push it into the distance. That's pretty much the main thing you need to understand when it comes to working with greens. Also, the lighter the color, the more white you add to it, the further it pushes it into the distance, and the darker colors bring that object closer to the viewer. So, not only desaturating it, but lighting, lightening it up pushes it further into the background, and the darker and more colorful, more saturated it is, brings it to the viewer. One thing to keep in mind when creating an underlayer for grass or dirt road is that it can be messy. If you leave streaks in the underpainting, it just adds to the final detail without you having to do much work. So don't spend so much time making it perfect.
So if you look at my grass here, there are still darks and lights in the background, but they are nowhere near the lights and darks that I'm using here in the foreground. And the way I make my green darker is just by adding a little bit more ultramarine blue. And in certain cases right here in the foreground, I used ultramarine blue with an even mix of raw umber. And like I've said before, those two colors mixed together will create an extremely dark color, almost a black. Now using the same greens and browns and yellows that I mix for the under layer, I'm using a liner brush and I paint almost every single blade of grass. And this is probably where I will lose a lot of people because even my husband says he has no idea where I come up with the patience to do this. It would drive him insane. But to me, all this detail is what makes the painting, what I love the most about it. This is the funnest part in my opinion. <laughs> 
So I start with the dark blades of grass and then I go over them with the light color. And I do this from the background all the way into the foreground going back and forth between the dark and the light. And because the underpainting is so messy in the background, it does not take many blades of grass to get enough information down so the viewer sees a field. As we come forward more, you can see in more detail what I'm talking about with the painting the dark and then the light over top of it. Also another thing to keep in mind, 
when you're working in the background pick a brush that's very very thin like I was using a 10 over 0 liner brush which is probably one of the smallest and I think they might go 20 but it's one of the smallest liner brushes that you can get because the further back you go the smaller things are going to be and when I come forward I have to switch my brush to a thicker brush so I can show the viewer that they're getting closer to the object
So we add more detail to the blades of grass the closer we become. So here I switch to a dagger brush and in the middle of the blades of grass I push a little harder to get a thicker line and when you lift your brush off the canvas you use just the tip of the brush and it creates a fine thin line so you can create a lot of really cool brush strokes with just this one brush. The brush is absolutely amazing and I think it's one of the must-have brushes in any art room. So if you do not have a dagger brush, I will have that in the link in the description below as well. And here is the final painting of the Texas Bluebell. I hope you really liked that tutorial. If you want to learn how to create more realistic details in your painting, Start right now by clicking on this playlist right here where I walk you through how to add detail in lots of different landscape scenes. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.